special news. Have a good day. With the declaration of COVID-19 as a global pandemic, it is essential to stay informed of the news and resources about the virus and its effect on children. As the virus continues to spread across the world, we are all facing multiple new stresses, including physical and psychological health risks, school and business closures, family confinement, isolation and economic vulnerability. Through all of that, children are particularly vulnerable. And joining us live via phone is Abisola Richard Ogbomo, child book author. Thank you, Abisola, for joining us on the news. Hello. Good afternoon, Abisola. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, let's get to it. COVID-19 has been declared a global pandemic. And as we continue to navigate this rapidly evolving situation, what do you think are the essentials for parents to do to stay informed about the virus and its effect on children? Um, first and foremost, um, it's very important that parents, especially, well, we've got, you know, in, in our community, we've got a mixed multitude. We have um, educated parents and semi-skilled parents, I would say. So I would say that um, for the ones who are educated, please try and be in touch with what the, w, what the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, has continually um, declared, and they keep updating information on you know, COVID-19. But for the ones who are semi-skilled, I would say that the basics are hand hygiene. So basically, the, the COVID-19 is the virus that predominantly ex, is, is, uh, exposes the, 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 the person involved through hand exposure. What I mean is, basically your hands are a main source of contacting the covid and so we need to try and distill it to our children in the easiest way we need to come down to their level and you know if we have to go as far as you know singing songs trying to break it down to their level for the ones that are very young for the preschool age which we need to go ahead and do that we need to be able to explain to our you know older children on the importance of washing their hands before meals and after meals. Children would always play, children would always touch things. So we need to encourage them to wash their hands as often as possible. We need to make readily available hand hygiene um, substances like the hand wash, hand sanitizers, so that our children can easily access them and use them as often as Possible. Now, Abisola, for the most of it, the lockdown has seen the closure of schools, with some schools and parents resorting to, to e-learning. What are some of the things parents can get their words engaged in by ways of fun and learning at these times? Pardon me, could you repeat the question? Now, we've seen, by, because of the COVID-19, we've seen the lockdown of many schools. And because of that, parents and their words are at home and they've resorted to e-learning. What are some of the things parents can get their words engaged in by way of fun and learning at this time? Well, um, thank God we, we were all able to access the World Wide Web and many schools are also doing their best to give these children almost similar experiences as they have in school. So I'd say go online, check for information that can help your children um, understand that this is not so easy for the children as well. And we've got materials that we can share with you. So if, if parents want, they can reach out to Plus TV and we can send some of our materials on, you know, the necessi necessity of, you know, keeping your hands clean, um, basically managing the challenges of, you know, e-schooling, the challenges of having to, you know, work and, and, um, you know, help your children out as well. Oh, so, yeah. so as, as a child book author, in what ways can the child's psychology be, en be enhanced to maintain a balanced mental and physical well-being? Well, um, for mental and physical well-being, um, I'd say that um, we need to always be patient with our children. 
um, if I'm correct, you're asking how we can balance mental and physical well-being. Yes, Is that please. the question? Yes, please. Okay, great. So I'm saying that we need to always come down to the level of our children. We need to be very patient with them. It's very easy to always want them to rush things over because we already can see the, 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 the final point of things. But for them, you know, everything is still like a new terrain. They're, they're learning on the job. They're learning as they, as they um, are exposed to these different facets of their lives. So I would say let's be patient with them. Let's, let's have conversations with our children. Let's ask them how they feel. Let's look them in the eyes and genuinely be present with them. And let's also allow them some activities. Sometimes, you know, because I know in, we, we find that in, the, in this period of the homeschooling, they tend to have to do more for longer. So give them breaks, you know, time to play, time to study, schedule things for them and basically ensure a balance. Conversations are important. Schedule the learning, schedule playing time, and have a balanced atmosphere for them, a secure atmosphere. And, and you can only attain security with children by, by, by scheduling and ensuring things are consistent, things are predictable as best possible. Child book author, Abisola Richard Obama, thank you for your time and for joining us on the news. Thank you very much as well.